Good I've morning, good morning. <laughs> don't, don't give it away. Good morning. This is going to be, is it five? Five. Five things that you can do at home today to improve your comfort on the bike. I'm here with Mr. Philbert as always, so I reckon let's just uh, jump into it. Okay. First and easiest one for me is handlebar width. Remember, the bike will come with standard kit. It doesn't know you. So a certain size bike will always come with a certain width handlebar. It's making an assumption that you're on the normal distribution of people. It doesn't know whether you're a really big, narrow, narrow person or a really wide person. Handlebar width, things to watch out for where you might have an issue is if you feel like you never can get onto the hood. You always feel like you're, you're leaning towards the inside all the time with your hands. It feels like the bike's far away, but you're, you're, the re you're not on a really long stem, but the reach really feels wide. It feels like sometimes you feel like you're, you're hugging, you're like a gorilla hugging a beach ball like this and you don't feel about. And sometimes it often will be at work, work, end up with really locked out arms. The reason being is, your handlebar width is part of your overall reach because if it, handlebars are wider, you have to go to further. So you could have exactly the right stem on there. You could have your saddle in the right place, but the reach has been affected because you're having to go outside your natural um, shoulder width to get to it. Um, so you can often, you, with that locked out arm as well, sometimes you'll pick up numb hands. So it can be a reason for that. Here's the thing is it's a relatively cheap thing to change and it's relatively a success. If you get on the bike in front of a mirror, your hands should be in line with your chromium, which is the bony bit of your elbow there. So if you get on the bike and you look down there and you're like this, or if it's too narrow like this, then that's right. It should be nice and comfortable and can make a demonstrative difference to your overall comfort for relatively little, little cost. The upside is it makes your miles more aerodynamic as well. Hood angle, so easy to get right. Your hood angle, really determines how your hand meets the front of the bike, right? And that's really important because if you're having to reach all the way around like that into what we call old deviation, that puts a lot more stress on one side of the wrist than the other, makes your arm lock out. And when your arms are locked out, you can end up with neck and shoulder pain, right? If you're someone who's often spending nearly all their time on the corners here, or you feel like you're having to really go down and meet the hoods in that really forward down position, just experiment with this because literally just mo mo moving the hood angle, you don't have to be, we don't want to be cowboys like this, all right, with our guns firing away, bam, bam, bang, like that. That's normally a sign that something else on the bike is majorly out, okay? But in my opinion, ever so slight angle of two or three degrees here just means that the hood meets your wrist in neutral and your wrist is much more better at cope, gripping, coping with the pressures of the road that are coming through it in that position. And it makes a demonstrative difference to the comfort and how you feel in your upper body, all right? Um, so do think about hood ankle. You don't have to be, if you go back into the 1980s and look at the old fashioned continental pros, all like this, elbows bent over, look how hyper extended elbows are. Don't have to do that. Shimano spent five years developing this thing that's got 16 different hand positions and we want to meet it in the best possible position. So my little tip, get your Allen key out. Just move this into the place where you feel the most comfortable with it. And once it is most comfortable for you, that's the right place for you, trust that. Saddle angle. I help design saddles. I've fitted many saddles. I do not know of any good reason for you to have your saddle nose upwards. And yet, sometimes it can slip there. Sometimes you might have uh, set it up there, first of all, like that, to accommodate something else that was wrong on the bike. Saddle being nose up can cause so many issues. For example, if you feel blocked, that you can't re reach very easily to the front, you get numb gelatalia, all those things can be caused by the saddle angle. Or if you're getting low back pain, because if the saddle angle nose is up here, that makes your lumbar spine do a hell of a lot more flexion. So it can make a demonstrative difference to, to how comfortable you feel on the bike. Now, my golden rule is it should always be dead pan flat or anything up to maybe three degrees nose down, okay? Remember, Look at where you sit on the saddle as well. So if you've got a curved saddle, if you sit at the back, it might be that the nose is a lot down because that's that bit there needs to be cur curved a little bit more, more. But saddle tilt makes a big difference to overall comfort. It's one thing I would say to always include on your MOT of your bike. If you're unpacking it, packing it, building it up, always go, what's my saddle angle? Yeah, what, do I, what am I normally comfortable with? Again, you can micro adjust this loads and loads if you're on the turbo until you find you're happy. Put a little level on there or the one on your on your mobile phone and then you got it. Saddle width. Now, most saddles come in either two or three different widths and the width of the saddle is the widest bit of the saddle. Just so you know that, right? That's the way they, they the monkshire goes and how they measure them. So it's dead easy to measure your own saddle width. Just go right to the back, the widest bit, and that is the width of the saddle. Now, what to recognize if you're having problems with saddle width? 
or whether a saddle width might not be optimal is if you're excessively rocking on the bike, if the saddle's too wide, you'd have to move around it and you have to drop the hips from one side to the other to reach the bottom of the pedal stroke. One of the key things that a lot of people say to me though is quite often they feel like they're never comfortable on the saddle and they find themselves pushing themselves back. In my opinion, that's often what you're doing there. You're looking, searching for the width, the more width for the support. And if it's not there, you just keep moving backwards. So if those things resonate with you, it might be worth looking into, uh, are you on the right saddle width? There are some really easy down and easy ways to measure sit bone distance. If you go on YouTube, measure self sit bone distance at home on cardboard and tinfoil. And, and they get you a little bit closer towards what might be your sit bone width. Remember, that's not your saddle width, that's your sit bone width. But if you go online, most saddle companies or bike companies will tell you what, what, what that what the right, right width saddle is for that sit bone distance, all right? Cleat wear. Now, don't be a cheapskate with replacing your cleats. You can't believe how many times I've seen people who might be experiencing slight knee irritation uh, or the lack of ability to get their foot in the right place and they come in and everything's absolutely all right, but their cleats are worn out. Katie's are just getting to the point where I would say they're ready for replacement. Remember, you spend all that time and energy paying for a clipped in pedal system with a cleat that engages with it. You want a nice new cleat will engage, have a good snap to it, and will position you right. You can actually look, there's some research out there where people have done where they've tried to estimate how much power you lose by your cleat being too loose. And it's a little bit, you know, but more importantly, your cleat should be nice and fresh, if you ask me. And if it starts to wear down, then you're going to start to get what we call cleat toggle. So you, you've got excessive movement within the actual position. And that can lead to, like I say, slightly irritating knees and things like that. So don't let your cleats wear down too much, all right? They feel great is when you change them, so you feel nice and locked in if you got it right. All right, thank you so much for your expertise. Uh, if you've got any questions, any bike fit videos, bike, bike fit questions, leave it in the comments and we will film some more videos. Thanks so much. I will change my cleats. <laughs> Sorry, Phil. Sorry. Oh, God, I nearly knocked it over. Right then, numb d isn't it, next? Do you want to drink the rescue tea? <laughs> 36 is. There, well, <laughs> do you say the legend? So today we're going to do Five down and dirty, quick, easy to implement. Don't say down. <laughs> you can boss me around like this. You're very lucky. <laughs> come round, come round, fucking. Right. Where am I? Entertaining yeah, dog or there. something? Yeah, you are. Stand there. Not a bloody poodle. You're definitely not a poodle. I'd say you're a rottweiler. Ah, oh, big, <laughs> big. Saint Where Bernard. Saint Bernard. Yeah, you, are a, you are a St. Bernard. Slobbering everywhere. <laughs> <laughs>